Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the Crate Nate SEXP. What we're going to be doing guys in this video is this. It's going to be pretty simple. I'm not going to be giving you guys a play-by-play -play install of the electronics because you have seen that before. You've probably all done it before. We don't need to spend a lot of time on that. What I do want to do though guys is this. We're going to unbox this servo. So if you watch my unboxing, you'll know that I picked up this big beast of a Spectrum servo, the S9110BL high voltage. This thing guys is 1200 ounces of torque or 1224 at 8.4 volts. Now, during that video, guys, I had mentioned that the XLX2 only goes to 8 volts BEC, or the, the BEC, sorry, guys, is only 8 volts. However, when I was in the Castle Link software, I did notice something, so I'm gonna show you guys that too in the video. So I'll show you guys my settings of the XLX2, but we're also, guys, gonna get to unboxing the big beast of a Spectrum Servo right now. All right, guys, so here it is. You got a full metal case, except for down here. This looks kind of like a composite plastic. You saw that it does have a external wire. So I guess if you were to damage this, you'd be able to buy this piece and then plug it in, which would be kind of nice instead of having to try to, you know, either re-splice the wire and, and connect it or use a little bit of electrical tape or use some liquid electrical tape. So it's kind of nice that it comes with this. It is a, a fairly short link, but in the Craig NetS guys, this all is like right together with the receiver box and all that kind of stuff. So this is gonna be perfect. But what I wanna do now guys is get this into the truck. I'm gonna show you guys, I do have my computer out. So you're gonna be able to see guys, my XLX2 settings, as well as guys way over there, but we're not gonna spend much time on it. I'm building the servo saver right there. So again, we are gonna be on the computer for a little bit, show you guys my settings, but mainly guys, it's gonna be getting this into the truck so that you guys can see how this servo performs that I almost just dropped on the floor. Uh, Cause I'm hoping guys that this thing is gonna be an absolute beast. It was three times the price of that Power HD servo. Actually, I think even a little bit more for something similar in specs. I think that one is maybe seven or eight or something like that, but it did not perform that way. It always actually guys felt really, really close to an RTR servo. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna get that servo saver built and we're gonna get this servo in the truck. All right, so as you guys can probably guess, the servo goes in perfect. Lots of room here at the back. It fits no problem. You use, obviously, guys, the fifth scale servo mount. Everything goes together. The servo horn goes together easy peasy as long as you follow the instructions properly. I had no issues there. The only thing that did come up, and I'm just going to quickly, guys, cover this. You do get these, like, little kind of servo grommet kind of things in with the servo. So they usually would sit right on here. And the nice thing about them is they just kind of give you a little bit of a cushion when you're screwing your screw in and all that kind of stuff. But I did try putting these on, and the issue I had is because obviously it pushes the servo that way a bit, it made it so that the actual wire coming out of the servo was kind of getting all pinched in here. So that was obviously, guys, a bad thing. So I removed those out, just used the included hardware, the screws, and then these like kind of little sort of sunken kind of washer things, put those in. All is good. Everything fits perfect. When it came to my mounting my ESC, I ended up, guys, using four screws obviously to mount the ESC so the bottom of the XLX2 guys has holes for the screws you can actually there's threads you can screw into it no problem so what I did I marked everything up drilled everything out the only thing I had to do underneath because kind of this honeycomb sort of thing is you got to kind of dremel out wherever your screws are kind of clean things up a little bit so that you can actually get your screw to go in and then sit flat it took it did take a little bit of time to do this and to get it done properly but obviously guys now I've got the four screws in there, it's gonna hold this thing tight. At some point, maybe I'll look at some, you know, an actual ESC mount or something that'll be a little bit cleaner or work a little bit better. But for right now, guys, I think this is gonna be good. What I'm gonna do now is, I had mentioned that when I was in the Castle Link software, I had found something. I'm gonna show you guys that. But unfortunately, during all this, so while I was putting everything together and getting everything installed, something finally popped into my head that I've not given any thought to. And I probably really should have, and I should have been doing it, guys, a while ago. All right, guys, I know a screen capture would probably do a lot better here, but I've never actually used it. And for this video, I just wanted to kind of quickly go over this. So yes, I will work on screen capturing later, but for right now, here's what I want to show you. So when you go into the BEC voltage in your Castle Link on the XLX2, what online it says that the XLX2 has an eight volt BEC. But when you go in here, you can see the 8.5, but there's also a custom. So when you go into custom, highlight this, punch in 8.40, enter. Then what we do is we click update. 
And just like that, we now have, guys, an 8.4 volt BEC. Now, that was awesome. When I first saw that, I was like, yes, I can run that servo at its 8.4 volts, which was something like tw over 1,200 ounces of torque. I was super happy. I even, guys, tried it. The steering was incredible. And yeah, I was like, woohoo! Except something came... Something popped into my head after which I have not really given a lot of thought about lately. Usually when we're thinking about the BEC, the ESC, and the servos, we kind of think about those three things and how everything's going to work. So if you have, you know, an ESC that has, let's say, a built-in 6-volt BEC, when you're looking at servos, you're trying to find something that's either high torque or high speed at 6-volt because a lot of us don't like to run external BECs. It's just one more sort of part that you've got to put into the mix, one more part that could fail, one more connection that could fail, and... I myself, guys, don't often run external BECs. So I usually look for servos that will work the best with my ESC, which this is working and it's doing exactly what I want, except I do have one problem. If you've been in the Futaba world and you've been using those receivers for a long time, they run at 6 volt to 7.4 which is right there. So the problem with that is now, if I crank that BEC up to 8.4, I am now out of the operating voltage. So I don't know if I am going to have issues. I don't know if there's like, a, let's say a built-in regulator that actually will limit the voltage to and just keep it at 7.4. I don't know that. I know from running other servos in the past and other Futaba receivers that I have cranked up the voltage on the BEC and the receivers seem to be taking it. I'm pretty sure, guys, in my sledge, I've got it set higher than 7.4, and I'm running a few Futaba receiver in there. However, now that I've finally given it some thought, I don't really think that's a good idea. And the reason I'm saying that is, even though it has worked, you know, this could be one of those things where I could be out somewhere, I could be running the truck, let's say, you know, close to a road, in a parking lot, doing a speed run, and then have the ESC, or sorry, have the receiver itself, guys, burn up and you got to remember that most receivers that's kind of where your fail safe and all that stuff is meaning if that goes there's nothing left to stop the truck or anything and let's say i'm ripping through a parking lot that's when it decides to go and it shoots out onto the road when a car's coming by hey bye bye whatever i'm driving if you've been living in the horizon hobby world so you've been buying spectrum products armas axial losi all that stuff well, that thing doesn't become become an issue because as you guys can see right here, right at the bottom, 9.6. So this thing, guys, runs a Spectrum receiver. And this is just an SR315. It will run, guys, from 3.5 to 9.6 volts, which means if I drop a Spectrum receiver into the Creighton 8S right now, I can turn that BEC back up to 8.4 volts, get that full 1,224 ounces of torque, which is awesome. I am not going to do that, guys, right now. The reason I'm not going to is I love my 7PX, and I do want to use that radio with the Creighton 8S. So I'm going to drop it down to 7.4. So today when we go outside, and I'm showing you guys the servo, showing you how it performs, just remember that is now running at 7.4 volts, not the 8.4 that it should be. At some point, I may change it out. It actually, guys, is going to depend a lot on how it just performs. At 7.4 volt, it's somewhere around 980 ounces of torque, which is still a ton of torque, so I think it's going to be fine. But either way, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all the gear back in the truck, get everything set up, and then we're going to go outside and just check out the servo. We're going to see how it responds, see how it is at 7.4, and hopefully, guys, I'm happy and impressed. Everything back in the truck. Everything is good to go. Batteries are fully charged up to LiPo voltage, so 4.2 volts per cell. And I'm curious now, guys, to see how it's going to go. So we're inside. We're on the bench. I've got my 7PX in my hand. I don't want to do this too many times because this thing's so wide it's going to fall off. But you guys can tell there there's zero issues. It does seem to be a little bit slower. So I did have this guy set up at one point at 8.4. That was around the time when I started thinking about the receiver from and i mean maybe it was just my imagination guys but it did seem a little bit quicker but what we're going to do now is we're going to head outside with the truck and we're going to try 
a test guys in a couple of different uh, conditions. So we'll try it on the deck first, then we'll put it guys in some heavy grass. And then I've got one other idea I was thinking of trying. All right, guys, the first test is just gonna be on the deck. So obviously guys, there's nothing here kind of impacting how the tires are gonna turn. We're not sitting in any heavy gravel or the grass or anything like that. And as you can see, that's just rocking nice and fast. Overall guys, I'm, that's pretty good. I don't feel like that's bad or anything like that for not running at the full 8.4. It does what I need it to do. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head down to the ground. You can definitely tell there's a bit of a difference there, but it's still pretty good. Obviously guys, once we actually get the truck out and actually are running it, we'll get a more accurate test. We're not usually turning uh, with no speed or anything like that, but either way guys, still doing a pretty good job though. All right guys, for the last test, I just kind of got the truck sitting up on that second part of the deck, just because that'll put a little bit more weight on the front. And with it being on the deck, you can see there's no problem at all. So you know what, while we're doing this, we'll just actually kind of drop it down into the grass and try the same thing. All right, so that guys is a lot more weight on the front end than what I was when I was up over there. And I'm also on the grass now. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, you know what guys, that's still pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. And it's absolutely freezing out here right now. So we're gonna head back inside. All right guys, there you have it. The Arma Creighton 8S EXP is now good to go. It's ready to rip. You saw the servo, which I am impressed with, guys. The servo is awesome, but I can definitely tell a difference, guys, from 8.4 to 7.4. That's a few hundred ounces of torque. I'm not exactly sure on the speed. So I think based on guys right now, so once I get the truck out ripping it around and, and I obviously I'm steering it when the truck's rolling, we'll see how everything is. If I'm happy with it, I'll leave everything the way it is. If I think to myself, you know what? I kind of preferred it. I, I like that 8.4. I like that full 1200 ounces of torque. I will swap in a Spectrum receiver. It's actually something guys I've been thinking of doing lately and that is getting rid of all my Futaba gear. I, I used to have issues with Spectrum receivers a long time ago, Spectrum radios a long time ago, like we were talking 10 years ago. That is not the case anymore. I've had zero issues with my Spectrum gear. So I may just go to a solid Spectrum system. I'm gonna keep my rugged for my, my crawler, my trail trucks and stuff like that, but maybe do something like a DX5 Pro for everything else. That'll kind of depend on if I can sell the 7PX and all the receivers and all that stuff and to see what I can get for it. I do really like my 7PX, but I'm just thinking I kind of miss the days of just having one radio. There was a couple of times where I actually thought a certain truck was bound to a certain radio and I went out with, you know, two vehicles with my one radio because I was pretty sure that both radios were bound to that. And then I got out and realized, no, it wasn't actually. It was with the Futaba or vice versa. It was with the Spectrum. I can't remember what exactly the situation was, but I do kind of miss that. I am somebody who prefers to have one radio. So I've always owned kind of like a more pro version of a radio where all my RCs are bound to it, except for, let's say, maybe the ones my kid drive. Um, and everything else, though, guys, is one radio, all my vehicles. So when I go out, I just know to grab my radio. We'll see. Again, it'll depend if I can sell the 7PX, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different than I usually do. I was just trying to mainly, guys, emphasize that servo, show you guys how it works, and the next time, guys, we get out, and for the first running video, I will spend a little bit of time then in that video, guys, also with the servo, only because, and like I mentioned, guys, I think at the start of this video or at the end of the other video, when you're buying a $300 Canadian plus servo, you want to make sure it's worth it. It's, there's a lot of servos out there, a lot of budget fifth scale servos that you can pick up for 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks that will turn your vehicle. So I really want to put that servos through its paces and see how it performs. But guys, as always, if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up, please subscribe and have a great day.